So we're trying to minimize the cost functions like this. We have target variable as y and x as the number of uh, independent variables. We've got uh, the parameters, the beta naught and so how do we find out the values of the parameters? Well, we optimize this cost function and then that's how we find out uh, the beta parameters, right? And the algorithms that we can use could be, you know, the ordinary least square, the gradient descent or the maximum likelihood estimation. Or the issue that we often face is that we always optimize the cost function on the training data. So if you're some familiar with model building using machine learning, you know that uh, when you build a mo model, you actually, you know, um, divide the sample into two groups. One is training data. So this is your training data. So you build a model in training data and do the testing or validation in test data. This is also known as the holdout sample data, right? So you do not show this section of data or holdout data or test data to your mo model or to the optimization algorithm, okay? So that causes a problem known as overfitting. So the model will fit well on training data, but it may not fit well on the test data. So the issue of overfitting is something that we often come across because the model uh, is always good on training data uh, in most times, but, but not so good on test data. So this is taken care of by a technique known as regularization. Okay. So it helps overcoming uh, the overfitting issue. So if there is overfitting issue in your model or there's a possibility of overfitting issues in the model, then with regularization, one can overcome this issue to a large extent. Uh, so why do you call this as uh, regularization? We call this as regularization as it helps keeping the parameters regular or very normal. Okay, and we'll, we'll understand what regular and normal means when we, when we say that the parameters have to be regular and, and normal. Okay, um, so so what, what is regularization is all about? Okay, so a few points to understand on regularizations. So um, generally we do not want huge weights in our, in our model. Okay, so if a model uh, is, is something like this, we do not want beta naught, beta one, or beta two to be uh, to be a huge number. This number, uh, this weight should not be very uh, high. Uh, that's not expected in a model. And the reason behind it, the reason is that if beta naught, uh, beta one, or beta two, these weights are very large, then even a small change in the weight, a small change in the weight can potentially make large difference in the target variable, right? Because if you, if this is large, right, a very small change in the beta will have a large impact on the target variable y. Remember, if you, you know, take the first difference, association, you know, the first derivative, you actually get beta 1, right? The rate of change of y with respect to x is nothing but your beta 1. And if beta 1 is large, then you, you, you're, uh, it's going to be very sensitive. It's very small change could, you know, uh, bring about a lot of changes in the value of y. And that's not something we expect because we want y to be more robust or more, you know, robust to any change to the parameters, right? All right. And if that is the case, then the, it's less likely to be, you know, um, you know overfitting case because... Uh, what happens is that when you use new data for, you know, fitting your model or even evaluating your model, a lot of times the beta that your training data has will not be the same in any new data, right? And that makes a lot of difference to the y, okay? And that's why, you know, we do not get a good prediction on test data or new data when the model itself has overfitted. So given this intuition and given the fact that we have now understood why do we not want, you know, higher weights, we can have, you know, something that actually manages this or something that can make sure that the weight is uh, smaller. So uh, essentially what regularization does is it, it puts geo weights to the features that are not very important, okay? Um, secondly, and they're not too much of weight on any feature, like, you know, not a single feature in the model should get a uh, very high, uh, an extremely high uh, weight, you know, because that becomes a very important variable and it could cause problem because any change in the new data could bring, uh, you know, disaster to the model. If one or a very few sec variables um, or features are so important. so. Uh, so, so the two things which are important, uh, smaller weights, and secondly, if something, some feature is not very important, then have zero weight, okay, and then none of the uh, weight, or none of the weights of the features should be very high, so that's not the case. So the three things that regularization, uh, you know, ensures uh, it's present in the model, and as a result of which, we will be able to overcome the problem of overfitting. Uh, how does regularization handle uh, this problem? How does it able to uh, overcome this? Now, we have this least square function in place. Now, that's our cost function. But in optimization, in a simple optimization, we, you know, go on to minimize uh, the least square uh, function, which is a cost function in this case. When we add the regularization, we actually add another term to the optimization function, okay? So, I'll just pronounce it for you and then, you know, I'll, I'll first explain. This is lambda by 2 uh, multiplied to sum of, uh, you know, this is the uh, modulus of betas. Uh, betas is exactly the same. These are the weights or the parameters. And then this is to the power p, where p can be 1 or 2, you know. Sometimes it will be 1. And sometimes it could be two, and, and you know many times it could also be more than that. And it still has convex optimization problems. So you know the same algorithms that we had used can also be used 
uh, most of the time rather straightforward solution here is the new cost function okay i've just written it um, you know just to make sure that it is uh, understandable so we actually take the summation of the uh, you know error square right that's our least square we have added this term and this term is known as the regularized terms okay we have lambda which controls for you know how much uh, this this beta parameter should be you know low and uh, you know at the lower end or, or it should be reduced and this is the summation of the modulus of betas okay and it is you know raised to the power p the one not only minimize the square uh, of the errors we also minimize the sum of the weight you know so that you know uh, you know the weight is also controlled it, it is not very high for any particular uh, you know feature and for any feature which is not so important uh, we can have you know a zero weight so in that case a feature selection itself is taken care of when we use regularization so it's not just you know helps in overcoming the overfitting problem it also helps in selecting the feature because the feature for which you know the weight is uh, is zero uh, is as good as not using that feature in the model right so that's also another advantage of using uh, regularization so basically two types of regularization and i've already said what what could be the values of p one and two right and based on you know moral um, so based on you know what the values of p are and based on whether we are using a modulus or not uh, we define the l1 and l2 uh, you know regularization so before that before we understand what l1 and l2 are we'll try to understand in terms of the loss function l1 loss function and l2 loss function and then it is becomes easier to understand l1 regularization and l2 regularization in l1 uh, uh, loss function so loss loss function is nothing but uh, you know your difference between your target variable and then what you actually get from the uh, your uh, model right so this is what we get from the model and this is the target variable given when we take the difference we actually get the error term and when you you know take a summation of that summation of yi minus f of x right when you take the modulus of that we call that as l1 loss function we can also call this as least absolute um, uh, regression right so yeah so this is the modulus on the other hand we can also take the square right which is you know more popular least square itself is more popular uh, than the modulus one right so instead of a modulus we have just taken square of that so what happens is modulus is that the error terms becomes positive all the error terms uh, they, they tend to become positive and then when you do the summation and uh, there is no issue otherwise they will cancel out and you know it will tend to be zero um whereas here if we are squaring the error terms before adding them up okay so it is just the difference in in which we are you know making all the errors uh you know positive right the first one we calling it as l1 loss function the second one we call it l2 loss function so this is L2 loss function where we have a least square case, you know, we are summing this square of the error, where this is with, in the first case, we are taking the modulus of the error and then summing. So that's L1 loss function. So this is the difference between the formulation of loss function. Regularization, uh, L1 and L2 regularization, both are of same, similar type. Okay. One thing to remember here is that uh, in the first case, we can have you know, multiple solution. We can have that. Whereas in the second case, where we have a least square, we always have a single solution. Okay. So we, we have a closed form solution. Uh, in this case, where you know, in the first case, we may not have a closed form solution. The first one we also call that as a lasso regression, okay. And the second one we call that as a rigid. So here is what L1 L2 regressions are: the least square. Now this is the least square, right? This is the least square regression cost function. We have added this one, which is a regularized term to this. Now, if the regularized term is a summation of the modulus of the betas or the modulus of the weights, you know, it's just the W has been used instead of betas uh, as the weights, okay? So that we call that as L1 regularization. On the other hand, taking the sum of the uh, the squared uh, sum of the you know um, square of the uh, beta parameters, then uh, we calling that as L two regulation. So it's similar to what we have seen for the L one L two loss functions. If you're taking modulus, it is L one. You're taking square of that, it is we, we take we, we essentially calling it as L two regulation. Okay. So this section we call that as a lasso, and this we call it as a range regulation. Uh, so finding optimal weights is, is a challenge, right? So what is the optimal weight uh, by using L1 and L2? Okay, so that is the biggest challenge. Okay, so uh, there are several ways, uh, several techniques in which one can you know get to find the optimal weights. I'm not going to talk about it. We'll we'll see that in an example in one of the next videos where I'll take you know a data and showcase uh, you L1 and L2 regularization and see how we can optimally find out the best set of optimal weights. You know how we can you know uh, tune the weights. How can we can find it out a suitable set of uh, weights which will be you know uh, very good for prediction. Prediction accuracy is supposedly uh, supposed to be uh, improved once you use L1 and L2. And whether to go for L1 or L2 will also depend on quite a number of things. Sometimes L1 will do better than L2, sometimes you know, in other way around. 
you know, it, there's no science behind it, but but you know, it's always um, good to try both and then see which one is working better, or, you know, better on your test data. So we'll see one example to understand what we have learned, uh, the theory that we have learned so far, and that will be uh, you know better and 